much of what we celebrate with the Christmas traditions actually originated with many of the pagan practices. Um, I was talking to my son-in-law, and we, he was like, you're going to talk about pagans? I'm like, relax, we're not talking about Black Sabbath, this isn't about, you know, all those things. And, but that's kind of the, the general thing. When we hear that term pagan, we think of something outside, something rogue, something, dare I say, evil. But the truth is, the idea or the labeling of pagan happened many, many years ago when uh, Christianity was starting to take hold. And as the missionaries were traveling around, anything that wasn't the path that they were teaching was dubbed pagan. And so the, some of the spiritual practices that were dubbed pagan, we have a little list here. We have, that was the the practices of the people, the common day people of the Romans, the Celtics, the Norse, the Druids, and many more. And so when uh, Christianity began to take hold, they borrowed much of the traditions that we know today. And, and what I want to say is that when we look at these holidays, what we're, what we're looking at is a deep mythos in humanity that is so deep that you will, you will light your menorah or you will put up a Christmas tree or you will have great, find great joy in giving gifts and, and not even have to know that it's come from deep within humanity and is bubbling up by means of you. And so I thought it would be fun to look at some of those, some of those origins of the Christmas that we know and um, some of us enjoy <laughs> today. And so much of the Christmas that we experience today and we practice actually came from a celebration of called Saturnalia. Saturnalia. And Saturn, and I may be getting the emphasis on the wrong syllables because I've read it, but I've never heard it pronounced. So <laughs> Saturnalia was the the celebration of the god of Saturn in the Roman civilization. And so when December came, when it was dark, there would be great celebrations and the agricultural communities would come together and they would bring more light. They would do things like take a wagon wheel and suspend it in the ceiling and then adorn it with hollies and evergreens and then put candles up there so that it would light the room kind of looks like the Advent wreath, right? <laughs> kind of looks like the Advent wreath. The, uh, one of the other practices was to give small gifts, to bring joy, to, uh, to, and to offer good luck. And that very similar to the gift giving that we do that's been um, widely commercialized <laughs> in our culture. But we, you know, we can, we're the ones who bring the meaning to it. We're the ones that bring the, the joy to the gift giving. And we have a choice. We have a choice to how we do that. We have a choice about how we want to move through that. And so if it brings you joy, that's powerful. Christmas trees. Christmas trees were originated from the Romans who would hang ornaments of their gods, little metal ornaments on trees outside their homes of the gods that they were honoring in December during Saturnalia. And then the, um, that was also a tradition of German tribes that honored the god Odin. And they would put treats and fruits in the trees outside their homes. And that Christmas tree tradition became much more widespread when St. Francis, who just loved God with all its heart, loved um, the Christ, loved this idea of looking at this time of year as, a, as an opportunity for us to recognize the light. And he said, let's feast. Let's he was quoted as saying, I want us to feast so much that there is food coming out of the walls. And so feasts would come up and there would be, and he brought the trees in and he illuminated them and he encouraged people to really celebrate Christmas and to celebrate what 
he and many of the early Christians deemed the birth of Christ. Now, there's, you know, I don't have my notes with me this morning, but I know that I've read that if they, you know, historians and anthropologists, when they look back at what, who might have been Jesus of Nazareth, there was very unlikely that he was born in December. Just because of the civilization, by the way people um, uh, took care of themselves in that region, it was, it was unlikely. But it was, it was the early Christians that wanted us to remember the light that came to us from this idea of love that, and God that incarnated itself into humanity. And what I start to understand when I look at this and the best word, that I, you hear me use it a lot the last couple of Sundays, but this mythos of the Christ consciousness is this idea that the light lives within us, that we are incarnations, that it isn't the great exception, it's the great example of how God comes from within each one of us. And so when we look at this idea of Saturnalia, I was reading about how one philosopher who was looking at their ceremonies and their celebrations and the things that the Romans were doing, they even brought forth their, um, the masters would bring their slaves into the, the celebration. And so this one platonic philosopher said that he interpreted the freedom celebrated by Saturnalia festivities as symbolizing freeing the souls into immortality. That kind of sounds familiar to me. <laughs> I mean, when I think of that idea of freeing our souls into immortality, well, I think that's the Christ idea, that idea that Christ is that Christ consciousness, that light that lives within us. I think the final tradition that I was looking at, and this one's probably um, well known to a lot of you, that Santa Claus was actually an invention of Coca-Cola in the 1930s with the hat and the red clothes and the, and the outfit. And it was built on this um, character, two characters. One was Saint Nicholas, who would give gifts to the poor, and the other was Odin. And in the area of Europe where Odin, in the German region where Odin was really honored and celebrated that time of year, children would put inside their shoes little gifts of straw and, and carrots for Odin's uh, animals that brought his sleigh through with the gifts. And then little gifts would be left in their stockings. And so there's, just, there's, there's a bunch more, but what I want you to know is that when you, when you hang a wreath on your door, when you light a candle for the Buddha, when you, well, no, not, we're not talking about Buddhism this morning, but when you light a candle for Christmas, when you, when you begin to practice some of these age-old traditions, that they are deeply steeped in civilization, that you are responding to something within you that is actually in your DNA, some kind of remembrance and what I think about, if I sort of bring this full circle as we begin to look at these traditions of solstice that have become our traditions of Christmas, I think about that the evolution of these practices. So prior to Christianity and as early Christianity was developing, the purpose of the traditions was because they believed that they would do something to bring the light back, to have the light return to us. And we know in this philosophy that it isn't anything outside ourselves that is returning to us. No, we are recognizing the light within. And so when you practice any of these rituals, I want you to be that part of our evolutionary journey from believing the light is outside of us to bringing forth the light from within. That's the evolution of all these traditions and that's what we teach in this particular um, philosophy that that light that so many eons ago people had to look outside themselves for, that that light is inherent in each one of us. There's no exceptions to that. 
You are a point of light of the divine. And you are never not a point of light of the divine. You are never not able to access that which is who you are, which is your very DNA, that idea of Christ consciousness that lives within you. You can never be separate from it. You can forget. You can get distracted. <laughs> you can have an experience that doesn't seem to doesn't seem to demonstrate that all in your life. But all those, are all those experiences are opportunities for us to remember and reveal. To remember and reveal. I have a, a, a sweet quote from Ernest Holmes that I want to share with you this morning. And it's from this thing called you. And if you're looking for a good beginner's book for Ernest Holmes, this thing called you is full of great little affirmations. It's a little tiny book you can find it in our bookstore, which is opening up again. It's a great gift for somebody. And it's easy to read. It's very digestible. And so Ernest writes this on page 120. The Christ mind does not refer merely to a personality who lived 2,000 years ago. It also refers to the innermost principle of our own being. It refers to the divine presence centered in us. We have been told to put off the old person and put on the new person, which is the Christ consciousness. This new person is our innermost self. Pure spirit exists at the very center of your being, at the innermost part of your mind, it is your true and eternal self. Such life as we have flows from it. There is nothing to our real being other than life and what it does through us. Now, Ernest is bringing home that idea that the light lives within, that all we are resourced by source. And when even the word resource, right? You are, the source resources itself by means of you. How easy is that to forget when your heart's broken? Or if you've got a financial challenge that comes up or you get a diagnosis, how easy is it for, to, for us to forget that we are always being the resource? The resource of love, the resource of health, the resource of freedom, the resource of beauty, the resource of joy. That is our birthright. And so as we move through the last, what we have, what is, how many shopping days left, whatever that, however, however you remember, as we move through these last few days before the honoring this rebirth of light within us, that Christ consciousness that wants to be known as you. We are not celebrating a little baby that was born 2,000 years ago. We are celebrating the light that lives within you. What I know um, with our particular philosophy is that we don't really have any formal holidays just those that we decide to take and make meaning of, just those that we choose to bring within ourselves so that we can have a greater revelation of God as us. And I can do that. I can do that with Groundhog's Day. <laughs> I can do that with Christmas. I can do that with Bodhi Day. I can do that with Hanukkah. I can do that with Easter. I can do that with anything. You, you being our philosophy, our movement, our teaching, have taught me how to find the light within myself. And as we sit here as a community, as we are together as a community, we will continue to reflect that light to one another. There's a cute little saying that um, if you spot it, you've got it. Now, when I first heard that, it wasn't a very positive thing. 
<laughs> somebody was sort of saying, if I was seeing somebody was grumpy, then I spotted, I got it. But I want you to flip that. When you see beauty, when you see power, when you see love, when you see joy, when you spot it, you've got it. And our job this time of year, oh my God, in this time in our evolution as a civilization in the Western Hemisphere, <laughs> as our job is to recognize that when we spot it, we got it, and then it's our job to bring the light forward. We have a wonderful holiday candle lighting that we will be doing on um, Christmas Eve. Excuse me, Christmas Eve. We'll, we'll start at um, 4.45. We'll ask you to come masked, please. We'll live stream it. We'll be singing some carols. And then at 5 o'clock, we'll begin our time together. And we will be bringing, we will be the bringers of the light. And so it'll be a wonderful way to fully culminate this idea, this integration of all these different spiritual paths that remind us over and over again that we are the lights of the world. I really want you to remember that because when you remember it, you get to pro project or to mirror or to f reflect that to someone else. I'll also be telling you the meaning of life, so you're not going to want to miss <laughs> our candle lighting. <laughs> um, as we have done every Sunday, I'm going to go over to the altar and begin to light some candles. And I will start by lighting the Shamas candle, although the Festival of Lights is over will continue to honor this beautiful, beautiful practice of lighting the candles of the menorah to remind us that there's always enough, that we are always resourced, that God is forever meeting our needs even when we don't see how. And then the Shamas candle in the center reminds us that it's our job to be the Shamas. And then with that candle, I will also light the first candle of the Advent, which is represented by love, and the second candle of the Advent that represents joy, and the third candle, I'm sorry, that's hope. This is joy. Third candle is joy. And then the fourth candle is peace reminding us that we are the peace. And then the center candle gets lit. And this represents the Christ consciousness that lives in each one of us. And then finally, I brought a new candle with a pentagon star in front of it as a symbol of the solstice where we are. I'm so close to that flame. Where we are. <laughs> We are the light. We bring the light. We remember the light. We honor the light. And so know with me as we, as we enjoy this holiday season that the thing, the reason for this season is you. For you are the light of the world. Come again, over and over again, to celebrate, to honor, to be all you have come here to be. Thank you very much. And now, thanks to exceptions and the guidelines by the mandate of the California <laughs> Code, I want to bring back to you our wonderful choir, the Jewel Tones, and Diane King Van. Thank you, Reverend Alice. All right. So our next song that we have is a beautiful little carol called A Wintry Noel. And we have a little feature at the beginning of it, two little solos by Jamie Kalama and Wade Woldridge. And then they'll be joined by some ladies, sopranos and altos, and then the whole, the whole gang will sing. So Wintry Noel. Oh, no. 
The choir is going to stay because they're also going to do something for offertory, so they're just going to chill for a second <laughs> while we do our offertory talking. <laughs> Thank you. That was gorgeous. Gorgeous. This is our time to give back. This is our time to do that spirit. For me, this is one of the spiritual practices that really brings me so much joy, knowing that I uh, give where I am spiritually fed. And this place here has been feeding me since 1989. So this is where I, this is where I give my joy. So, <laughs> uh, so let us take our gift, our, bless, our uh, tithe, our offering, in our hand, and let us say our affirmation together. My offering is my acceptance of God 
as the source of my supply and symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply. Thank you, Reverend Judy. And so we have um, a sweet contemplative type of song here, but you know what? It's, it's all about change and new things, so we're doing something rousing instead. <laughs> And uh, this is called Rise Up, Shepherd, and Follow. It's a very different new arrangement, and hope you'll like it. was hard to sit still on that one. Oh, thank you so much, choir. Beautiful. That was absolutely gorgeous. It's so wonderful to have them back again. I, I, I wanted to tell you for your offering, we don't pass the basket. So um, we have a, a basket at the back of the room here and one over here for your offering, for your donation. And also, if you're uh, out in cyberspace today or cyberland, you can go to our <laughs> We're all in cyberspace. Ooh. We can go, you can go to our website and you can uh, donate there or just simply just send us a check and appreciate so much. So I wanted to thank Reverend, uh, Reverend Diane. Whoa, there we go. Is that a new beginning here? <laughs> Diane King Van, our musical director, our wonderful um, choir director and the fabulous choir today. Thank you so much. Let's give them another hand. And right along that with our fabulous band, 
Dave, David Page. Oh, and Derek's there, and <laughs> I don't see anybody over there. And and Ed over there. Oh yes, we love you. We we're just we're so blessed to have you. Such a wonderful, wonderful band. And I want to thank everyone that has made this service this week possible through their volunteering, for their love, through their prayers, everything. And that uh, if you have been in service, are you in service today, or if you've been in service all week, please stand so we can acknowledge you. So many. Thank you, so many. That includes our people in the sound booth, our camera people, our volunteers that do the hospitality, everything. So, um, so our practitioners today. You met, you saw Rick Dale. He was, he's our practitioner for today. Cheryl Lyman, if you'll stand, and Lorianne Witte is holding the high watch in the back. Now these three practitioners, they are available to you for prayer after the service if you so choose. If everything's going great in your life, you can get a prayer to keep that continuing. Yes, if you got a bump in the road, and you know, there's a lot of bumps sometimes. We have a wonderful support group here, our practitioners. Practitioners is a person who has been trained in the art and the science of spiritual mind treatment, of affirmative prayer. So there'll be two at the back of the room here and one in the tranquility room to serve you, our beautiful community. I take advantage of them, not advantage, but I use them all the time, all the time. So, and I appreciate that energy and that love that flows from all the practitioners knowing that they're holding the highest consciousness for us all. Okay, so now some invitations today. Yes, indeed. Conscious Connection meets today right here after the service from 12 to 12.30 to discuss today's inspirational message. And as Reverend Alice mentioned, this Friday night, Christmas Eve, you're invited to our sacred candle lighting service and because it's Christ Christmas Eve, we will be starting the evening with singing some Christmas carols, and then our service will begin at 5 p.m. And this is just a beautiful evening, unlike anything you've experienced before. So don't miss it. Then early, really early, on <laughs> the morning of Friday, December 31st, 4 a.m., you are invited to join Patrick Freeman and friends, and I'm one of them, for the World Peace Meditation, where people around the world will be collectively meditating on the idea of peace. More details will be available next week. And for 2022, our annual Centers for Spiritual Living theme is Living Everyday Wonder. And this year, CSL has created a colorful spiritual journal for 2022. So what it looks like. And the journals are designed to help facilitate living in everyday wonder. And it includes themes for each month and each week and affirmations as well. Um, there's also space to record your, your thoughts and your reflections during the week. So we have several copies available for purchase in the bookstore for $15. Santa's helpers are here today. <laughs> with Christmas stockings filled with treats for your animal friends and family. They will also be here with stockings on Christmas Eve. They're out there. Yeah, I see Get those one. two elves right there. Yep, there they are. Yay. Thank you, Animal Kinship Ministry. And Shifting Sands continues to meet on Thursday mornings from 10.30 to 12.30. And Coming Home to Spirit, led by Joyce Fournier, meets on Friday mornings at 8 a.m. Both of these are available via Zoom, and the links can be found in your biweekly email. And if you're not on the list, just call the center, and we'll put you on there. And I think it's time for our closing song. Please rise. <laughs> I shine and I shine so bright 
I shine, and I shine, and I shine so bright. You are alive, you are alive, you are alive in this world. You are alive, you are alive, you are alive in this world. And you shine, and you shine, and you shine, and you shine, and you shine so bright. And you shine, and you shine, and you shine so bright. We are alive, we are alive, we are alive in this world. We are alive, we are alive, we are alive in this world. And we shine, and we shine, and we shine so bright. And we shine. We shine and we shine so bright. We shine, we shine, we shine. And I know that each one of us will remember to shine this week, to shine that light within, that Christ consciousness that burns so bright within each one of us, for I know that we are indeed the light of the world. We give great thanks for this, and so it is. Amen.